Okay, it's day 74 of my sweet potato germination experiment. And, you know, it's uh, 5.30 p.m., 17.30 California time here. So there's a lot of sun reflecting from the sliding door, and that's what this light is that you see. I mean, it does get some light directly um, coming through the balcony during the day, um, maybe around 1 to 2 p.m but it's not enough to make everything wilt like it did before. I saw that some of these leaves did wilt sort of when they were in strong sun earlier in the day, but that's okay. It just kind of alarmed me to have the entire plant wilting, um, using up and losing way too much water through its stomata, which are these little holes in the underside of these leaves that the plants use to passively diffuse um, carbon dioxide to get carbon dioxide into their mesophyll cells to conduct photosynthesis to build sugars and also they need those holes to diffuse extra oxygen they produce so they do use some oxygen in these plants like we do um, but they produce more oxygen than they use because of the photosynthetic process so they need to get rid of extra extra oxygen through those little stomata those holes which are microscopic and because they have these holes they lose water through their stomata and that's why these leaves were all sagging during the day they just couldn't pump enough water in through the vines to adequately hydrate all of these leaves so they were wilting but they were still all green and healthy there weren't any uh, sunspots, sun damage so just by the green color of this plant it's a lot more green than say honeydew leaves even the healthy ones so I would say it's just more suited to having more photosynthesis going on but at the same time you know I think this is a plant that prefers the shade instead of the direct sun so that being said you know these leaves find number one is huge it's uh, very robust these leaves are really really big and you know it goes all the way here so that's pretty good um, let's see vine number two isn't as robust you know it starts there and yeah it ends there I think this is vine number three you know I'm not sure if I even have this order right anymore two and three are very similar so that ends there and over here you have vine 4 so vine 4 has its shoot ape glomerular stem there growth has been very muted in vine 4 so I don't know what the deal is so this plant is a major water hog and when I tilt the pot you know nothing is shaking in fact you can clearly see with the camera itself there is nothing in there it's bone dry and part of that is because it was bone dry last time I watered. So of course, most of that water got absorbed into the soil immediately. That's why the plant didn't even splash some extra water out, you know, the pot, when I moved it. So I'm gonna go ahead and water this. So again, I'm gonna use my custom watering apparatus. Oops, spilled some water out. So all these leaves being in the way makes it a little more difficult plus I have to hold the camera so I need a lot more water than that so again this is my custom made watering device it's just a 2 liter plastic jug with a conical tube that fits you know, almost exactly so I wrapped it up with some plastic and I taped it off with packaging tape so I did a diagonal cut to make the water pouring more easy Alright, so that's pretty good. Uh, I think I'll do a little bit of watering from the top as well. I mean, you're not supposed to do that as per the instructions of these plant spas, but I have a little bit of water left. What I'm going to do is I'm going to water near the origins of vine number four. Well, it's really hard to do all this you know, while I'm holding a camera and talking, so. That's a pretty good job. That should wet whatever is sprouting from the top of the tuber. 
I'm actually kind of curious to look and see um, what the state of the tuber is now, but I don't want to disrupt the plant by digging everything up, so I can only imagine what's going on in there right now. It's day 77 of my sweet potato germination experiment. So as you can see, the leaf development has continued and I just checked the tray. It's run out of water again. So I saw some kind of leaf hopper on these, uh, one of these leaves and it's gone now, but you know, so far there are no signs of insect infestation and all the leaves look really healthy. So as you can see, the water tray is dry again. I'm gonna top this off. And also there's a strand of spider silk there. I'll just kind of break that. I don't see the spider anywhere. It could just be one of those straggler threads that uh, spiders, you know, let go of when they need to drop from a high place. So some of the leaves at the end of vine one are round like this. And there's a third example. I think that's it. Um, no, here's one too. So, you know, four, five, I guess. Five leaves are round like that. They sort of look like lily pads instead of the other leaves. They're missing that point at the end. There's probably no real significance to that. Um, but I just thought that was interesting. You know, it's sort of like the honeydew. Maybe they produce really rounded leaves when there's a lot of sunlight coming from all different directions. All right, so I'm gonna start the watering process once again. This thing just drinks water like crazy. Need to rewater and top off the water tray every maybe three or four days, even though I moved it to the shade. Uh, used up a lot of the bottle there. This was full before. And you know, I think I'll water a little bit from the top too. You can see some dead brown leaves there. Those were the ones early on that were kind of buried to the hill. Let me see. So this here is vine four. And you know, they all come out of the same origin spot there. So I'm just going to water a li little more there, you know, in the center of the pot. Um, with the way things are going, there's no way I'll be able to overwater this plant. Even if I water a little bit from the top, just because it it's so thirsty and it uses up so much water. Actually, you know what? I just found another vine. And I'll zoom in a little bit more on that later on. But, you know, this water is having trouble soaking in. Yeah. I don't know why that is. It doesn't appear to be uh, wet on the surface at all. It just seems really dry. I'm not quite sure what kind of bug this is. It could be a white fly, you know, a leaf hopper or something like that. And that's bad news, of course. I've seen one or two of these today. And I see something else. Let me zoom in on that. I think that's just a fungus gnat. No big deal. When I look at the far side of the pot, I can see this fifth vine sprouting up. So that's an unexpected development. I would say the position correlates roughly to that little shoot or sprout that was coming up elsewhere on the potato tuber in the very early days and that all got buried somewhere in the middle and forgotten about. So that's a welcome development. It just shows how robust uh, sweet potato germination is from tuber. And you can have new shoots coming into play so late in the game. So here's a good look for the origins of all the shoot systems. To the right you can see shoot number five coming out. In the middle here the greenest one, you know, to the right. This is a uh, shoot system number four. It's uh, very robust as well. You now it's got I'm not sure, I think this belongs to Vine One actually. You know, for here, this small leaf over there, um, this leaf, and this leaf here, and this, 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 you know, you know, the shoot ape called Maristem. 
you know, fungus net underneath there. It's no big deal. So shoot four doesn't have those purple leaves. I mean, these are sort of have a purple tinge, but you know, development's been slow for this shoot system. And yeah, I think that's just because I wasn't supplying enough water. So I watered a little bit from the top and hopefully that will spur the growth of these new shoot systems which undoubtedly have root systems that are shallow still as opposed to vines 1 through 3.